$3,000 on Virgin Galactic. I got in at the peak and my ego got the best of me. Virgin Galactic dumped 18% in one day. I was holding like eight option contracts and another 600 shares. On July 12th, I lost $12,000. Okay, so I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, I need to see how much you lost. You're just pulling numbers out of the hat. So here's all my trades, okay? Alphabetical order, okay? And how much I made or lost, right here. Dun, 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 12,500, boom. SPCE, Virgin Galactic. So I wanna talk a little bit about uh, SPCE loss, which is a five-figure loss. When I have too many five-figure losses, it actually, number one, starts decreasing my confidence, which is a no-no. And number two, makes me more risk-averse. And number three, it forces me to take less risk later on because um, your portfolio starts to shrink. So it's very important for you to understand on how I trade and uh, some people to avoid algorithms, they just trade in the morning and they trade at the close to avoid anything in between. But what I do is, so I, I'm a scalper, so I sit there and I, I battle algos. On some stocks, algos work really good, they're very tricky, and on some stocks, they're stupid. I mean, they're just pretty much, they don't even exist a lot of times. So, on SPC, it, oh my god, it was very crafty how, um, how they were actually uh, manipulating the market and giving you false hope after false hope by bringing the stock up a couple of cents and then crashing it immediately over and over. Um, you don't have a smooth and steady decline where you just wait until it completely bottoms and then you get in on a strong reversal on a strong volume. This is very crafty. It gives you a fake, false reversal followed by an immediate jerk down. So when that happens, um, you know that algos are doing a very good job. So for those that you don't know what algos are, algos are algorithms, uh, basically softwares that trade in nanoseconds, trade in fractional trading, and battle retail scalpers like me. So um, just to recap again, I took a huge loss on SPCE because I underestimated two things. Number one, how much of a run-up SPC had, SPCE had already because of WSP, Reddit Wall Street Bets Group, because they took this stock up 300%. And I'm sitting here playing the news of the stock going even higher because of Richard Branson uh, getting into space and finally turning its company into profitability where he can start charging wealthy individuals who want to go to space for a short period of time. Look, I've seen companies' valuations get even crazier levels than this did. So, in a sense, I was like, I'm just gonna buy it high and sell it higher. Okay, that was the whole idea. So initially I was getting in 300, 400 shares, which was not a big deal. But when you start losing, the ego gets the best of you. That's the whole idea about trading is you're battling your own ego. So if you start losing, your number one primary ego, uh, what was the word? your ego automatically forces you to double down. Because you're like, what do you mean I just lost? I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna recover it on the next uh, reversal. That's the, because I reverse, I, I recover so many of my losses all the time that I'm used to recovering my losses. That's how I, I don't care if I take a huge loss at the beginning of the day, a lot of times I'm recovering it by the market close. So to me, I'm just like in the same mindset, I'm like, all right, you took my money, watch watch this. I'm gonna take it back again. 
So I doubled down, I quadrupled down, and I started getting heavier with options, thinking a $10 billion company on technical level, but not on valuation. Valuation level, I was also wrong. So while I was thinking on valuation basis, I can actually wait until I average down the next day or the day after. The Benzinga article most likely paid by short sellers hit the wires at the perfect time to create a doubt and fear that uh, a downtrend reversal was coming. And that's exactly what they needed for people to take their loss. Very crafty. It was manipulated all the way through. Anyway, I took a loss on the same day. So sorry, I pretty much closed most of it. I left like 200 shares. So I kept 200 shares for the next day. And then I took another small loss, like another thousand dollars on the next day. Um, and then I was like, this is stupid. And it just, it tanked to 30, but I was already out. But who cares? I already lost the majority of my money in the first few days. And this was a very valuable lesson is that when you bet on companies with less than 50 billion market cap, guess what? There is a chance that it's gonna pull down 15%. It doesn't happen often, but it does. It does happen once in a while. Last time this happened to me was about at least eight years ago on Kate Spade. So this doesn't happen frequently. On a Kate Spade, I don't know if you've seen my website, uh, during the earnings, immediately it dropped 11% because of a low forward year guidance. So I made it like a grand on earnings report and within three, four minutes that I went to the kitchen, drank some orange juice, came back, the stock took an 11% dive. How you guys doing? Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about Space Virgin Galactic. Uh, Virgin Galactic is a aerospace uh, manufacturing and space travel, tourism space travel company. It has plans to start charging $450,000 per seat to launch people into space, just like the one you saw Richard Branson do recently on July 12th. So on July 12th, I lost $12,500 because my ego got the best of me. To this day, I once in a while, I still have days where you will take a heavy position at the wrong time and that erases a lot of your profits. So for me, it erased about month, almost two months, month and a half, uh, almost towards two months uh, of profits. Um, even though normally my average range is about 10 to 15 K a month, but because the volatility has subsided, I was making less. So I was making like five, six grand a month. So this was a big hit. It was like the market punching me in the stomach. And uh, you need that. Every trader needs that. Every trader n needs to be okay with losing. It's, it's just part of it. Um, so taking these losses, uh, it reaffirms the fact that you have to manage risk accordingly. Um, but this was, I want to talk about exactly how it happened. So you understand my mindset and how foolish it was, um, where the stock already had a huge run up because of Wall Street bets. So I was not buying it on valuation basis. I was literally buying it as a momentum play. And because Richard Branson went into space, the test flight was successful. And I said, I'm just going to scalp a couple of percentage points and get out. It started off that way, but it quickly ended. Uh, well, it quickly escalated into betting more and more because the stock was not having a higher upside. So I started betting heavier and heavier and then slowly got into options. And if I had held on till the end, from the stock going from 60 down to 40, I would lose at least 30 to 40,000. So losing 12,000 is, um, you'd be amazed for me to say this, but it was good, it was not bad. So 12,000, I got away scathed, but 
it, it didn't kill me. I lost like 11% of my portfolio. So this was huge. And normally I, I have a really bad August. I hate August. I don't trade in August. So in a way, it's funny, like in the back of my mind, I was getting prepared for August. And I was like, I'm in, I'm in July. I'm, I'm, I've always done good in July. I'm untouchable in July. So in the back of my mind, I didn't know that it would get this bad. Um, and as an aggressive momentum scalper, I, I bet heavy. And some of you know, like I will bet heavy. If I need to, I'll deploy more capital and push it into options. Uh, so what happened was everything went wrong, everything. So besides the stock already had a huge run up because of Wall Street bets, then Richard Branson comes down from space and he all of a sudden announces a shelf offering on the same day. So he decides to no, liquidate his own share. He knew this was going to happen. He knew that the stock had a major run. This was already at a $60 stock. He announces a shelf offering in the worst day. On top of that, a Benzinga news article comes out and says that the, a reversal could be imminent. And literally, they released the article exactly at the, the worst support line. Uh, and literally, I was like, okay, when that article came out, I said, if I don't cut my losses now, I'm done. I'm toast. <laughs> so that's what happened. And uh, yeah, this was definitely my uh, second biggest loss this year. Anyway, a little bit about space, uh, Virgin Galactic. Why, why do I keep saying space? Virgin Galactic, uh, $6 billion company. Richard Branson, just now liquidated another $300 million worth of shares because the company is not making any money until they start really charging for these flights for these passengers that they're going to pay half a million dollars. Until then, the company is sitting on half a billion dollars in cash and is draining $275 million or so a year, give or take. So towards 300 down to the 200 range. But uh, so it's basically a company that's sitting in a lot of money and just doing a lot of R&D until everything falls in place. But I think this test flight was uh, a huge milestone in that company. So I have I have great hopes on this company. I, I as a long-term buy, it's great, but I literally got in the worst time. The stock went from 60 down to 25. It lost already one third of its value. And I look foolish for actually saying this because there's a lot of memes going around of all the idiots that actually bought at the peak and I was one of those idiots. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I, um, that's part of the game. That's, that's how it works. Anyway, imagine July 12th this happened. Right now it's August 14th. Um, so imagine it took me a month to actually finish this video, edit it, and know that I edit my own videos. I don't. I like everything to be the way I want it to be. I'm very meticulous as far as music, sounds, the way, the way my uh, which parts I want to keep, which one, which parts I want to edit out, how my face look, everything. Like so, I cannot have somebody uh, edit my videos. So that's why um, it takes me a long time to do one video. But I'm gonna try to stay consistent. Not try, but I'm gonna be consistent. Is just YouTube asks, well, how often, tell your subscribers, how often are you going to make these videos? I don't do that. I just do it as I please. If I wanted to tell you uh, something that I'm going to do uh, at a certain schedule time, I would get a corporate job. No, I became a trader to do anything I want at any time I want at my leisure. The people, my competition that's pumping out videos every day, they're spending four or five hours a day on videos so these guys are actually traders and they actually spend four or five hours a day to do a video every single day so they can actually rank higher on the YouTube algorithm. Come on, man. <laughs> they are. I just, I don't want to name any names, but they're out there. It's, they're, they're teaching absolute garbage. Anyway, uh, I've been super busy. The reason I don't do these videos a lot is because <clears throat> my focus is on stocksbootcamp.com. My company is getting a huge revamping. 
I'm putting in so much work. The day trading course is almost complete. It's completely improved. And then the portfolio management course and the swing trading course is all separated. I mean, this is going to be, I'm raising the bar. So my focus is on that. My focus is not on pumping out YouTube videos. So I feel bad for lagging for a month for this video to come out, but it had to be done. Um, so that's about it. And what else was I going to mention? Yeah, so by the way, after the liquidation, Richard Branson, he still has, uh, I think, 46 million shares. So he still has a billion dollars in the company. And uh, he says that he liquidated, he liquidated the shares so he can pump the money back into the company and do different things and fund the other, uh, as, um, other revenue streams of the company that have been lagging. Um, I forgot which ones they were. But anyway, um, it's good that the, you know the owner is still holding a lot of shares, so it's it's that's a very good sign. Um, but keep your eye on SPCE. I think the selling is overdone. A lot of the a lot of these as um, Wall Street bets high flyers have come down. So just take a look at those. Um, they're getting into oversold territory. So um, I'm scalping it on the long side here and there. But overall, I'm very interested to see what's next. You know, right away, Jeff Bezos went into space, then Elon Musk. It's just the billionaire competition is heating up. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. It helps me a lot um, because I don't make a lot of videos. So it helps me uh, get seen by more people. So please subscribe. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you.